Hey guys, how's it going? Well, as you may all know, I have been uploading audio video of Abe and occasionally some other teachers because I have been very, very interesting in knowing the secrets of life. And my goal is to reach out into the world where there are like-minded people who are really interested in these teachings. But sometimes there is a barrier of language. So I am here to lend a hand whenever I can. But right now, I'm having a bit of trouble with the subtitles. Eventually, I have to pay for the program every month or I'll have to renew it for another year. So for the time being, I'll remain listening to my own audios while I try to figure out the answer. Please be patient with me. And if someone is willing to offer a helping hand, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me my email is mentioned on my channel. Let's make our dreams come true. Wishing an awesome week. Enjoy and chill. I knew I could do it. Thank you. Yeah. My question is about advice. <laughs> We've been talking about that all day. We're talking about being in the receptive mode of what your inner being knows. And so the question about advice is not the question. Where I'm getting it from is, am I getting it from my source or am I getting it from the peanut gallery who's worried about things? So on that, I often can't determine or perhaps I overanalyze. Well, maybe you can't determine in the beginning, but if you've taken the time to quiet your mind so that you're feeling good more and more of the time, then you always know every warning is bad advice and every encouragement is good advice. Every, you shouldn't do that is bad advice. Every, Ooh, this is going to really work out well for you. That's good advice. In other words, your inner being is always guiding you toward what you've asked for, never warning you against what you don't want. That's how you tell the difference. That's why Esther asks herself, she'll get what feels like a strong idea. And then she'll say, Oh, where's this receiving coming from? Is this coming from source or is it coming from things I've learned along my physical trail and warnings from other humans? And sometimes it's not as easy to see as others because there's a lot of momentum of it. But after a little while of meditating, you can really tell the difference. On that, I'll come back to the advice on the meditation. Might I be the one exception in all of the universe? <laughs> if there is one, it probably is you. No, no, no. You're special, but not in that way. <laughs> so what do you mean? Are you having a hard time meditating? The hard time is I've committed to it. My husband has been a beautiful example of 30 years of 3 a.m. dedicated daily meditations. And I see that. Well, what do you think meditation is? Just describe it to us, what you're reaching for in it. What I hear from you and I like to achieve is coming back to a neutral place, stopping the momentum of. So as Esther has been talking to some of these people that she really thinks would benefit from meditating, who haven't quite been able to get there yet. Esther says, you know, sometimes I start over and over and over and over and over and over again, because I've waited too long into the day. My mind is too active and it's not easy for me to shut it down. And so I just keep listening again for the air conditioner. I just keep listening again for it. I just keep listening again for it. Is it, it normal to I, forget a hundred times in a minute to, that you're supposed to be listening to the air conditioner? Yeah, because if you've got active thoughts, that's all right. But as long as you just remember the one thing you are reaching for is a quieted mind mind, which just means thinking about things that are not that interesting. You see, you can't shut your mind down. You've trained it to be active. Your mind doesn't want to shut down. Your mind wants to be alert to things. So that's why you choose a quiet place. If you can find one where there's not much going on, if you can accomplish that, where you're comfortable, where your physical body is comfortable. Like just now you wanted to find comfort. That's important. If you're not comfortable, that will keep occurring to you and then just focus upon something that doesn't require much thought and then just return to it and return to it. Sometimes counting your breath 
is a good one. Can you accept that what's happening is you've got too much thought going before you're sitting to meditate? Yes, that's why I'm yeah. trying to meditate. Let us tell you something that we know about you. And this isn't a bad thing, but it is in the way of your meditation. You are a really deliberate person. You're precise in what you do. And what that means is you're unwilling, and that's all right, we get it, to give up control. And that's what it is for you. You don't want to give up control. Well, what we want you to understand is you're not giving up any control. You're just allowing yourself to resonate with your ultimate control. It's not about giving anything up. It's just about relaxing in. When you're in meditation, if something happens and someone needs you, you'll be alerted to it. There's no danger in just quieting your mind. It's just a respite. It's just a relaxation. It's just a deliberate slowing of unwanted momentum. The best analogy is the cork floating on the surface. Let's call that a really good meditation. Hold it under the water. Not so good. Let go of it. Bob's back up to the surface. That's a good meditation. Thank you. That's what I was hoping to hear. May I go back to a question about the, the most important thing we want you to hear is you're not getting it wrong. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> you're not getting it wrong. You're just getting ready to be ready to be ready to be ready. And the commitment to doing it, that's really good. And then the enjoying it, that's another thing that's really good. Esther was reaching for different ways that she might focus. And we were encouraging her to do it so that we could tell you all about them. So she downloaded a digital ticking clock on her iPhone. Seemed like a good idea and drove her crazy. <laughs> Tried it for two or three days, couldn't get into meditation about it. She kept adjusting the sound, the vibration of it, the loudness of it. And finally she thought, forget this, it's not working. I might like that app. <laughs> Say again? I might like that app. Different. So then she got a little candle. It's not real, but it flickers. And she watched that for a little while. But then she saw the butterfly over there. She saw the bird fly over there. She noticed there's a piece of dirt on the floor over there. So her eyes open turned out to not be a very good idea for her. So then she focused on her breathing and found out she was hyperventilating. <laughs> you just kind of have to find what works for you. And so what she's found works the best for her is like, let's listen in this room. Hear the wind? Now, if we'd be quiet, that'd be really good for you to focus on. It's subtle. You have to listen. It's boring. Just keep focusing on it. Don't think about what it is. Just hear it. You, hear it. I do, and then I start to think about things that get me excited, and then I go... Well, now... You see, if you get quickly to the receiving mode and then inner being thoughts start occurring to you, that's a whole other conversation. Let's have that conversation. <laughs> that's what happens. Sometimes that's what happens. But if you reach the place where you've focused on whatever it is to the point that you feel detached, where you can't feel your foot from your nose, that's there. If you've reached the place where there's a movement inside your head that's sort of almost like a tension that's building and then releasing, then you're there. If you are in a detached enough place that your inner being is offering suggestions to you and you're so out of the way that your body is responding to the intention of your inner being, then you're there. So we'd get there first. Get there. Let that happen to you. Let that evidence of non-thought happen before you start receiving the thoughts. Thank you. I've been there. If you've been there, and every time you sit to meditate, somebody writes a book through you, write it down. <laughs> Something more? Will you please tell me, I know that I believe that everything that comes into my experience is just attracting what I'm putting out. Often I find it interesting to find the correlation 
between when this shows up, it means That's I'm here. That's fun. That's fun. It's fun when I can figure it out and it's something good. Something has been perplexing me and it well, shows up over and over. Well, then you're just not ready to be ready. We'll talk about it if you want to, or it might be more fun to receive it yourself. Oh, there it is. There's the answer right there. Somebody just leaned on a light switch. Which doesn't mean it wasn't a message for you. All right, I'm gonna keep looking for it and maybe I'll ask you later on the cruise if I don't figure it out before then. We can talk about it, wanna hear it? It's so odd. Made the lights go out, we wanna hear it. I love like the inner being moving through me and me glancing at this object and picking it up and knowing I'll need it later or leaving for a day of meetings and seeing my hawks over and over. Yeah above me right in front of me evidence of alignment yeah what do the random shoes laying on the side of the freeway mean <laughs> i'm a, so attuned to it that it has to be it's meaningful and we're going to give it to you it's a quest for freedom from a place of rebellion think about it when's the last time you threw a shoe out <laughs> that's my question every time i see it but what we're getting Who at lost is the shoe well it's not a lost shoe it's a deliberate somebody threw the shoe away in other words somebody was fighting somebody was frustrated it's very rare that a shoe falls out of a car <laughs> it's a deliberate thing so it is a quest for freedom from a place of rebellion and you just can't get there from there you cannot get to freedom from rebellion. They are two very different vibrations. And so how that relates to you is just trying a little too hard, just trying a little too hard, wanting to let go and not being willing to. We might have even caused an exaggeration of this in your experience a little bit when we talk about deliberate creation, because deliberate creation makes somebody that's accustomed to succeeding through action and through thought and through deliberateness, it makes you more deliberate. But if you're more deliberate when you've got resistance, then it just causes more tension. For a while, we called this gathering the science of deliberate creation and you all just got crazy with it. You're trying to suck your thoughts back before a law of attraction could get hold of them. And that's when we began emphasizing receiving become a master of allowing your connection you see and often you do but often you're sort of intense control of your life experience and that's what all of this is about it's because I know that the things do work out for me and the magic does happen and I haven't found that balance of how much of it is my sheer will putting it into place and then learning well allowing. all of it all of it is you because contrast caused you to ask for it and that matters and you've asked for a lot and you came with powerful intention into this physical experience so you're asking in a very 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 strong way and so the answers are coming to you but you're somewhat resistant to the answers because there's something within you it's within a lot of you you came to believe early in this life experience from your exposure to others that you had to prove your worthiness that you had to demonstrate your success. You couldn't accept that it was just there. This will tell you a lot. One day, Esther overheard this conversation. Actually, we all overheard this conversation because it was someone in the hot seat expressing it. But Esther had seen something like that herself. And so it was really meaningful to her as she listened back to the recording. The woman was trying to teach her small daughter that the universe was looking out for her and that well-being was hers and they were at Disneyland and there was the magnificent parade at the end of the day and the little girl was watching the parade and she didn't seem to be enjoying it that much and her mother said honey this is all for you she said no it isn't it's for all these other people too there's sometimes a practiced thought that I'm not special and that I'm not blessed and that I have to do something in order to be special and be blessed, which is such a flawed premise. I get that. But the practice thoughts, it's like instant default. And I feel like I've been doing so much work to allow that when they're just that resistance shows up. So instantly. it's like the conversation that we had earlier. 
Don't try to get those thoughts to go away. Just think other thoughts. And as you give more air time to the thoughts that feel good and less air time to the thoughts that don't feel good, they will just dissipate and the new thoughts will dominate. And you're really at this wonderful tipping point. In other words, this conversation with you is highly exaggerated because of the intensity of you. We wouldn't be coming into a gathering and meeting up with you and that be the first thing that we feel about you because it's not the dominant thing. It's just the thing that's activated right now because it's the thing that you want to know about. All right? Oh, thank you.